difference, one cup at a time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time, time, time. making a difference, one cup at a time. Well, welcome everybody. We are back. It is the afternoon show. That's right. And I am joined with June Ahern and we're going to talk some paranormal activity and her books and all of that good juicy stuff. And we're going to spill a good strong TEA because that's what Miss Liz does. So before we get started, we're going to do all the disclaimer, all of that good stuff, save our little butts here. And then we're going to do some bio and we're going to get June in here and she's going to spill a TEA for you like no other Miss Liz has never had this tea before. So disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time live show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the given time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward for may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that the show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and will see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea times are done on Thursday this year in 2023, unless it's a rescheduled tea time. And then they will be on on Monday or Tuesday. So now let me give you a little bit on June. And then June's going to come in and she's just going to spill some good old strong tea we're going to do a lot of digging and a lot of laughing and a lot of just enjoying. So grab your tea, grab your coffee, just enjoy this afternoon as we come together. So June and her near death experience in the early 1970s opened her paranormal abilities, which led to a career as a psychic reader and a medium. Her work was the basis of her highly received fiction and nonfiction books, as well as a screenplay currently in movie development and various multimedia appearances. She has all four books. Her books, The Timeless Counselor, The Guide to a Psychic Reading, was number one bestseller of a new author at New York 1990 Whole Life Expo. She is featured as a paranormal investigator in a TV series, The Haunted Bay, on Amazon Prime and YouTube. Now retired from private practices, June continues with public speaking and met, metal, metal seal. I'm going to get her to say that word to me, coaching and teaching. And I'm going to grab her and jump her in because that word, I'm not sure what it means. So let me get her in here. Welcome, June. Welcome. <laughs> and she has her tea. This is how we roll, guys. We drink tea here, you know. And we have different cups and different flavors. As you can see, the teas are all back there as well. So June... What is that word that I'm trying to pronounce? Metaphysics. Metaphysics. Or metaphysical. So what yeah. is that? So 
that's the study of more of the universal, the cosmic uh, energies. People believe in astrology or how they use nature. It's it's a science. It's scientific, but it is open very much to all of the world, say the psychic world, not discounting it, rather as all scientists should do, looking in, see where it belongs in your life, what is going out there in the cosmic energy. So metaphysics, uh, there are many metaphysics throughout the centuries. You know, we can go into Plato, we can go into so many. Uh, philosophical, metaphysics can absolutely is very philosophical. So it's a, it's a, it's a study of uh, outside of what we know as science and including all that is around us, the universe, the cosmic energy, astrology, numerology, all of that. So did you just say Plato? Yeah. Does it have, how does Plato work with this? Well, because Plato was very philosophical and okay. Plato looked at the world not in linear way, but rather open your mind. And in metaphysics, that's what is being offered to you. Will you open your mind beyond what you physically are experiencing? Can you find another way to experience? You know, what does one hand clapping mean? That kind of thing. So uh, in that way, you know, we talk about the philosophies. We talk about the old Greeks that looked at the universe as in codes and in numbers and uh, very different than only the linear way of thinking. Oh, I like that. Objectively, you know, you're going to look at it, how it relates to you. You're going to look how it relates to others. It's more subjective, how it relates to you. Wow. Okay, now let me take you back to 1970, June. Okay. Oh, I'd love to go back and have that cute little body all over again. <laughs> right, the 70s were good. I was born in the 70s, so 70s are ah, good. Yeah, yeah, 70s were trippy. 60s were really trippy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to 1970. What happened in 1970 to you, June? Well, I was out on a date, first time date, um, with a handsome guy. And we went down outside of my city, San Francisco. And we went down what's called down the coast, you know. And we went to a jazz, a jazz club. And I was under age, so I had my sister, my older sister's ID with me. Though we don't look anything alike. They took it. <laughs> After we left, I didn't realize that he had taken some drugs. Okay. And in that, we got lost. And we got lost in a car park. Uh, empty. It was just empty. And he hit, he, he nodded out. And he hit a, a pg and &E pole, utility pole. And we had a very serious a car accident. Uh, I went, there were no seatbelts in those days. You didn't have to wear seatbelts. And I went through the windshield. Uh, but the dashboard caught me, came back in, and then I had, came back in with the windshield all in my face. So all my face from here down was torn off. Ooh. You know, all the skin was down off of me. And all I could think about is I was bleeding on my new clothes because I bought new clothes for this date. <laughs> That's all I kept thinking. Oh, my God, my new clothes. When I went into the ambulance, well, before I went into the ambulance, I had, a, there were... How we got how we got found, I should say that. There was a young another young couple that was in the car park. They too were lost like us. They saw the accident. They had to go to a phone booth. And you remember in those days, you know, there were no phones unless you were yeah. home. And they called it in. They didn't come back to the accident. I was sitting in the car bleeding just everywhere. And I believed I saw, or I, I know I saw. A beautiful woman, kind of maybe middle-aged, outside of the car. And she said to me, don't worry, June, everything will be okay. Later, I had asked who the woman was, and I asked the policeman, and no, no, nobody's there. I went in the ambulance, and I expired. So I was dead for seconds. I mean, I wasn't dead for long. They just said, oh, we lost you for a while there. They never really said what the while was, but I, I figured it can't be too long. Yeah. And that's when I had this really remarkable um, vision. I died, as I said, I died. I went to the pearly gates. They rejected me. I came back to earth. But in that time, um, very difficult to to even explain to people how absolutely stunningly beautiful for me the other side was. Serene, serenity. 
joy. All of those words is what I experienced. So how did your life change after that, June? Well, you know, the, the, at first it didn't change uh, right away. Uh, well, because physically, I had to recover physically. I was actually in the hospital for a week. I, mean, <laughs> I don't keep you for the hospital anymore. My injuries were so bad. And I was just trying to get physically better. And then I started to know things about people. I mean, I could be in a grocery store or I, I could be somewhere and I would look at somebody and just feel like they had been talking to me and I knew things about them, but I didn't want to ask. So if that went on. Knowing things about people, uh, we could call it deja vu. Like I would imagine that I was talking or seeing somebody and within a, maybe a couple hours later, the exact same uh, thing took place, you know, meeting with somebody. And then... A little later, uh, I started to, ha I had a visitation from somebody. I didn't know he was dead. Uh, another time, uh, then I found out later. And my sister had two friends that died. Uh, she was supposed to go meet him in Hawaii. I said, don't go. She missed her plane. And uh, so I had told her, I'm, you know, your friends are, have been killed. They had a car accident and they went off the road. Oh. So all of these things started coming to me, and I got really interested in, um, you know, why, why? And I couldn't, who am I going to talk to? I came from a pretty religious family, you know. It wasn't like nowadays. There's a yeah. great, huge place where people can be acknowledged and respected for their intuitive psychic experiences. Back then, you just zipped it, or you were weird. <laughs> I, I, I want to get into that because you went like this, right? You, you, you're mutable. And that's the word you gave me to describe yourself as an individual, mutable. And you just went like this. And I want to jump into that word right now. Why do you feel like this? Well, you had to keep your mouth closed. So the mutable part of me would be rather than me feeling, oh, I have to belong or I have to tell people. I learned very much, you know, the other change in me would say, well, let's change into a more quiet person. You know, mm -hmm. let's let's not get out there and do that and let people know all of your experience. And then I would change back again to having these experiences and needing somebody to talk to, needing somebody to explain to me what, what's going on here. Uh, I didn't really have very many. I had a couple of friends and I went to a Tarot class and those people, so I mutated over to becoming a different June than the one I had been before, but I had to keep it mostly quiet from those that were mm. the closest to me, family and close friends, because as again, it wasn't as acceptable. Only crazy people had. <laughs> could hear well, welcome to the club, girl, because like I said before the show, I have my crazy paper. So if anybody wants to know why Miss Liz goes crazy sometimes, I yeah. actually can. I have my papers. I can do crazy. Well, as the song goes, right? You you, you got to go crazy. It keeps you from going insane. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we have a comment here. I, I'm not sure if he's asking a question or if it's a comment. So I'm just going to bring it up for you, June. He says, you have experience with astral travel. Seems I have been, I keep traveling it, but in the astral, I get grabbed out of a place I not preferred to go. Okay. I have, I have astral traveled. Yes. And uh, th at the beginning, it wasn't necessarily by will. And then when I realized what was happening, that I could astral travel to some places I wanted to be in. And then astral travel is the ability to stay in one place and leave your body, so to speak, on a psychic level and go okay. to another place that you choose to go to, you want to go to. Now, if you're being pulled out of your body, then you absolutely want to find out what is attached to you? Why are you, you should not be pulled out of your body. You, you, if you want to uh, uh, ask to travel like St. Jerome, uh, at, would ask to travel and go to different meetings and everybody that was there say, oh, he was here. I saw him, I saw him. And so I, I guess I would question why you're being pulled out of your body. That is something you would want to speak with a medium about. Uh, and, and find out what's going on, what's surrounding you, what has attached to you, what kind of energy or entity has attached to you. That That's not what it should be. I'm telling you, that's not a good thing. So, June, you just mentioned medium, and, you, and you've done, the, you are a medium, correct? Correct. 
So what's the difference between a psychic reader and a medium? Or are they together? Well, they can be together. I mean, okay. I certainly was together. As a matter of fact, I denied being a medium for a long time. <laughs> and I had a couple, I had one client that kept saying, recommended me because I only took recommendations. I never advertised at all. And I was just was busy. And so uh, a psychic reader is a person who you, uh, uh, clients come to and they would like to know about their life. You might okay. want to know about who were you in a past life, uh, what was plaguing you in this lifetime. Usually people want to uh, have you, uh, you know, oops, my little necklace just fell off. Uh, they, <laughs> There's a lot of weird energy <laughs> going on with us. <laughs> and so, oh, oh, what's here? Anyway, so <laughs> and the psychic reader may not interact with spirits of the dead. Okay. Or even what you call vampire spirits, uh, low grade spirits. The psychic reader is focused on most people want a reading that uh, gives them option in the future. They want oh, to know okay. where am I going? What kind of job am I going to have? You know, how is my relationship going? So the psychic reader will talk about, well, here's the foundation. This is what happened. This is where you're at now. And this is where you're going. And a medium may not be a psychic reader at all. They very well be focused on communicating with spirit. Uh, okay. We think of John Edwards. You know, he, he's a good example. Yes. For me, he's a good example. I know people. He is a good. Phony, he is I've good. watched him enough to say he's not phony. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've watched him and watched him. I've watched some of the others. I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> You know? Yeah, I won't mention any either because I, 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 yeah, I'm not going to mention, but um, so that's an example of someone who is a medium. You wouldn't go to him and say, where's my job going? That's a psychic reader's job. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the difference. I happen to be both. So what is your mem most memorable experience as a medium? Oh, God. <laughs> I want to get dig it Miss deep. Liz, I've had so many, you wouldn't believe the stories. You would really think, uh, like, is she for real? Well, I think that the one in Jamaica was uh, has always brought me up to like, woo. Uh, I went to Jamaica. I was commissioned. I actually was uh, brought to Jamaica, uh, to Jamaica to do some talks and deliver to the people in Jamaica I'd do some readings while I was there. Well, one of the persons that came for a reading was a doctor, a physician. And he said his wife was plagued with a lot of illnesses. They've taken her to New York. They've taken her to Chicago. They took her everywhere to find out her illness. And they said, well, it's cancer and like that. And he said, but no, she's saying that she's being attacked by entities. I call them low-grade entities or vampire entities, uh, entities rather than spirits. Oh, okay. God, I can get into all the spirits, actually. It's a lot. No, no, that's okay. I want to get into all of that. And my listeners want to know. Okay. Well, and my listeners have are a, as as Liz is. They are connected to the spirit <laughs> of the world. They have, a, and they have an energy. Think of spirit. Your spirit, Liz, is an energy. Okay. And we all have an energy. That's why when we uh, transition off, the spirit leaves the energy. That's why if you touch a dead person, they're just cold like nothing. Because they have no more vibrational energy, they have more no more so no more heat in them, more fire in them, and so I went there and they asked me, uh, would I come down and see? He asked me, would you come and see my wife? He was so nice and so proper. It's I really like proper people. I have a real hard <laughs> time. I mean, there's time and place for everything, but we're just a little too casual for me, social at, at professional places. So he was so proper. I, I did go to his house. Now, I'll have you know, this is the beginning of 1990. I did not have uh, enough experience in my mediumship for what I got myself involved with. That's something that uh, <laughs> Linda Bear, remember, remember Linda Blair in the, the yep. movie? Yeah. Uh, in Poltergeist? Yeah, it all I'm not the guys. No, I'm I'm thinking the exorcism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's not. I knew it was going to come to me because I'm really into those shows as well. <laughs> so uh, I went to his house, and I was there in July. And if you've ever been in Jamaica in July, it's hotter than hell. <laughs> you know, I guess I haven't been to hell. I can't tell. And so uh, I I walked in, and 
uh, the first thing that got me was this like a stench of garbage. And I walked over uh, to the back of the house. I'd never been here before. I walked to the back of the house and I said, it, I said, pointed like in here. I didn't know where in here was. It was a closed door. And it was a kind of a, uh, like a back porch, a little closet where you keep some food and stuff. Oh my God, I walked in there and it was like walking into an ultra freezer. I mean, I just went frozen and the stench and the energy. And I, I just about fainted. Now I am, I don't really care for shows where you go over dramatic. I'm not an over dramatic person, unless I'm yeah. laughing enough to maybe a few drinks. And so I walked in and, and as I said, and they had to pull me out of there. It was horrible. I was shaking. I went into the bedroom where the wife was. She was covered in a mountain of blankets and I was attacked, physically attacked. At that time, I wish I had taken photographs so I could say to people, hey, this really happened. Because, you know, wow. you always have people that doubt and I don't blame that. I think you should be a little bit skeptical. Personally, I am. And I was pinched. I was hit. You know, when you roll up a wet towel and you flick it at somebody. Oh, my brothers used to do that. <laughs> yeah, my brother was bad for that too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was like the submarine robbery, right? Yeah, that, mm -hmm. was, without getting in trouble by mom and dad, right? Yeah, I didn't touch her. I just hit her with the wet <laughs> the towel. towel did it, mom. I hit her. <laughs> and and then that went on, and I just had to say, "Be gone, get out of here, leave me alone." I mean, my uh, so that's my most. Uh, one of my most memorable experience. I have worked with the police on missing and, and uh, murdered people. You know, oh, uh, you know, I, I have I have done all that, um, and it's it's not always pleasant. I know people think it's exciting, and, but I'm going to tell you, it's actually very sad. Very, t uh, it's like a terror. You're going into something and you're being murdered. That's what I experienced, and uh, so I, I say to people, you know. I don't think you could go to ghost hunt and you want to see all these murdered people and, and uh, oh, just fall right off. And uh, because, you know, you're talking about a victim. You're talking about yeah. somebody who died really horribly. Yeah. So I have a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to hear these stories because I, I think me and June are going to have some tea afterwards. <laughs> So, June, I want to get there. Yeah, we have another comment from Ward. I want to get and get his comment up. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, well, I that is what I thought. That's why I tried to find if someone may help me explain. But it sounds weird. I am around. I think Gray's not sure because they not let me see. Okay, the Gray's. Okay. Um, well, you know, I cannot discount him. You know, I can't say no, it didn't happen, or yes, it is the Greys. Uh, you know, I, I don't have enough information on him. Um, I don't know what area he's in. He could look through like a maybe a metaphysical store. He wants to be fit. When you deal with mediums and people like that, you even have to be more careful than when you're picking a reader. You know, that's all I could say. Uh, now, there is a great show on television. Um, oh, God, as soon as I said it, it went out of my mind. Can you believe that? <laughs> I'll, I'll think about it. It's Amy. Her name is Amy. And it's called The Dead Files. Now, oh, that's something he could look at and maybe uh, get a recommendation or see how it's done. Because she deals a lot with these kind of entities. And I'll tell you, I like her. And for me to like another medium or to really support them, it takes a lot. Because I'm really particular. Yeah. Not that they're not good out there. But I like certain things the way I, I have been trained in, educated yep. in, and experienced. I don't like those shows where they go, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I'm like, well, what are you doing it for? <laughs> you know? What, You're trying to wake you up the audience it? or what? <laughs> <laughs> because to me, that's not true. It, they're yeah. not then the medium, the paranormal investigator, if they're acting like that. Now, there was a time, Defenestration Building in San Francisco, and they were filming me and, and I saw something that scared the heck out of me. And I said to the camera guy, if I'm backing up, you better get out of my way because I don't get scared easy. So if I feel that, oh my God. It's like I tell my kids, if you see me running, you start running. But there you go. And that might've been the line I used. Cause I'm not a runner. So if I'm running, no, you run. Either. Come on, come on. 
I want to get into the intuition because you're, you're talking about intuition and understanding, listening to that gut feeling, right? Where something feels off, the energies are off. I get that a lot when I'm in a big crowd. I can find energy that's like, oh, I don't know. Let's stay away from that corner or that spot. You know, do you get that, June? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, I, I, you know what? I'm really happy that the that everything has is open and we can talk openly. And there are many people. What I've learned from giving lectures, teaching classes, clients, uh, paranormal. I, I did a lecture in a big theater, and I had so many people lined up that wanted to tell me. I had this experience. What do you think? Am I nuts? Am I fit? And how many people have had experiences? Yeah, you know. And um, so, what are we talking about? Intu intuition <laughs> we're talking about the intuition <laughs> so empath nowadays uh, you hear the word empathic and it sounds what you described it's uh, more of empathic empathic is a is a intu intuitive way of getting information okay and uh it, you empathizing yes and when i had students and teaching students i said listen empathizing is okay you don't want to get pulled into sympathizing Oh, okay. Once you start sympathizing, you're becoming the other person. You're picking up how they feel, how they're, what they're experiencing, what their thoughts are. When you're empathizing, you can't stand a little distance away. Most people that use empathy, I'm, I'm empathic, really are beginning to sympathize. And this in the psychic world is a problem for the person. See, as a oh psychic reader, I cannot become that person's information. And quite frankly, and without ego, I'll tell you, I was so good. As I said, I never advertised for readings and I was busy every week for years, decades. And that's because I stayed true to what was going on. So you have to make a distance like a doctor, yeah. psychologist. You got to make that distance. So empathy could be a very uh, difficult experience and that's why i like to teach people the difference between being a uh, empathy and empathic and being an intuitive person and you're an intuitive I, person you can make that little bit of distance and still have the same reaction you just learn how to associate is it intuitive feeling is it yours is it somebody else's how do you deal with it that's it. That's I, I like that you're bringing this up, June, because an em, 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 I can't even say empathic. the word empathic, yeah. it, you know, feels drained a lot, like it gets tired a lot. And I can understand now because they're, they're turning into the other person. So whatever that energy that person is carrying, you're actually pulling it in. So it's almost similar to what Ward is saying here. We're getting pulled in. Yes. Yeah. That's why you have to watch your thoughts. Uh, you know, people say to me, oh, you're so positive. You said this, you're strong. I had to work at it. I did not have the best childhood, by the way. <laughs> I was brought up with the, you know, and, and a lot of negative comments were made constantly. And so you have to decide to take control of your intuitive reactions. Uh, and that's something I, when I would teach, I would just keep slamming people. Come on, get out of that being that person. Now, I have been that person, especially when I worked on the murder cases. Uh, uh, and it was, it's real hard. It, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, like, I, I can understand how you can be pulled in during those cases because you're actually looking for this person and understanding what happened to them. So you have to be empathetic. Empath uh, empathic yeah you're, you're i don't so know why i can't say that word either. today like i say it all the time what's yeah. going on here well um, you know what I, I i actually have trouble with certain words i can't say my husband laughs at me but um it's okay we know what you're talking about because we're intuitive yeah. to you so what's the right. difference Emp emp people with uh, empathic <laughs> empathic reactions <laughs> usually happens around the around the belly button and the stomach the gut the gut feeling there is actual scientific proof that the gut sends messages to a part of the brain, hippocampus, I think, yeah, hippocampus, and the brain sends messages back to the gut. So it is an actual truth. When you say, oh, I'm feeling something, and then most people will touch their stomach. Oh, I'm feeling something. I'm getting the, someone's walking over my grave. You know, uh, your brain is alert, alerting you. Something's happening. Something's happening. 
And once you learn to say, okay, let me take a step back. Let me go into more of the intuitive mind. You see how there's a difference? Yeah, the I do. The body will react physically. It will react to everything physically. That's the body. We're physical beings. And then, um, you, then you will become emotionally involved with it. And then it will go up into your intuition. So it's an alert thing. You know, it's the id, the ego. Stay alive, stay alive. Something's, something's different here. Something's not happening here that's right. I'm getting a feeling. I'm walking down this dark alley and I'm like, oh, I don't know. You know, I know it's a shortcut, but. So all of this is taking place inside your body and your mind. <laughs> yeah. And your intuitive mind wants to talk to you. Well, I think that's really, really important for all of the listening audience and that will listen to the replay later. You know, we're, I'm learning a lot during this conversation, you know, and this is what it is. We're having an open conversation about things that we don't usually talk about. And that's what we're doing today on Tea Time. So I really encourage everybody to share this Tea Time, share it with someone that you love, you know, and we're just going to have a straight, honest, raw cup of tea. So I want to get into June's tea. June's got her cup of tea here. She's drinking tea. And now she's going to serve you a different type of tea because that's what we do on Tea Time here. So, June, what kind of tea are you going to give me today? I am drinking the teacher tea. And it has flavors of exuberance. And a little hidden sense of authenticity, awareness, and adventure. That's my tea. See, and this is how we serve different types of tea. So why did you give me those words, June? Well, because I am, I, I've always loved to teach people. Uh, you know, if my life became better, I wanted to share it with somebody. I, I've always been a kind of a supporter. Even as a teenager, all my girlfriends could come to me and I'd be like, oh, you know what you should do with him. So I like to teach. And I didn't want to become a teacher and stand up in a classroom, but I, I've been doing it. I said teacher because we are all teachers at some point. Every teacher becomes a student and every student becomes a teacher. And this is the truth. I know this. Exuberance. You want to live your life. You want to be full of gusto. You want to have a, a, an enthusiasm for life. And people say to me, oh, you're so enthusiastic about life and everything. And I said, well, not always. But yes, because we're here. We're here for a very short time. I mean, I'm in my 70s now. It's going to be adios for the next, if I make 20 years. So you want to be exuberant. Authenticity. Who are you? Not who is what your family said you are, what your friends said you are, what society said you are. I mean, you can get feedback. You know, I've learned, I have friends that really supported me when I came out as a psychic, and thank God they did. When you live authentically, you are not so influenced by everybody else's thoughts. You know, social media, people are like, oh, yeah, I feel this way. But do you really? Do you really think that way? That's the wonderful part of being in touch with your intuitive mind is authenticity, who you are. I said adventure. If you don't think about life being an adventure, you're not going to get to that living authentically what you want in your life. So if you think that it was easy for me to get where I'm at, I had numerous, probably more challenges and struggles than most people who uh, have a safe life. And, and, and I'm, I, I'm not down on that. I think it's great. It just wasn't great for me. Awareness. The greatest great of living authentically with your intuition and intuition, the psychic mind's here, the intuition's here, the imagination's here, and it all goes in a line how it, it comes. Then you tap into realities that you may never have considered in your life before, read about, heard about. Uh, truly, uh, <laughs> truly what has happened in my life by living authentically with my intuitive mind. That's and I love... I love it, June, because, you know, being authentic and you mentioned these eyes, you were coming down the ladder and they all started with I. So it's with us. It's within us. Yes. You know, the imagination. I don't get a lot of people that talk about imagination. So I want to talk about imagination. What do you think of imagination, June? We want to think about children. We hear our little children. 
if you haven't been around children, you gotta, they're, they're groovy little things. You know, like everybody else, they're human, they have bad days. But yeah. when they begin to say, let's have a tea party, or I'm the king of the castle, and you're the dirty wee rascals. <laughs> they become it. They are like the original actors, right, on stage. And their imagination begins to teach them, teach them about themselves, about what's out there, what they can create. Uh, you know, you see uh, preschool and kindergarten and first grade, second, they use a lot more art. And then as time goes on, they get into other things. Uh, and then art becomes less. But art, art is a, it's like the little match that just stars the rocket, uh, the rocket of your mind. I so like when you, that. Yeah, when you live in, in your imagination, the intuitive mind begins to come and connect with you like a DNA connection. And it, um, it begins to form. You've all, we've all heard creative visualization and manifestation. Everybody says, well, well, how you think you create. There you go. Your imagination, the intuitive mind, it takes hold. It's in, it's in, the, it's in the place of creation. But it can't get there if you don't imagine it. Write it, draw it, uh, however you want to do it. Build it. And then your intuitive mind starts saying, you know what? I want to, I want to make my life like this. That's that following your heart thing. That's following your intuition. I want to make my life like this. I want to have this. And your intuition begins to guide you. Now, does that mean that everything you get that you believe is intuitive, it's going to get you what you want? No, it doesn't. What it means is it gives you some steps on your path to what it is you want. That's why people are afraid of it. Like, oh, I failed. No, no. Keep following that intuition because it's got little hidden keys, little doors like the little gnomes go into. It's taking you somewhere. Alice in Wonderland. And that's the imagination and the intuitive mind. They're like they're little friends together. I, I love that you brought in tea parties and Alice in Wonderland because that's my number one show. If anybody knows Miss Liz and it's the little doors keep trying, you know, and failing is good because it teaches us to keep trying. Absolutely. You know, if this doesn't work. Try another way, you know, and I love that we're talking about imagination because we don't talk about it enough. We're taking this away from our children today in today's world we're saying no you can't imagine that you're going to be a rocket star or you're going to be uh you know alice in wonderland you're going through door we're telling our kids no 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 let's tell our kids yes imagine you yeah. know open the minds free free yourself from all this heavy stuff you know we were talking about this before we went live you know people that are heavy people that are downers you know we just got to let them go and get on another train because our train is just going in a different direction yeah and just, I want, uh, release them with love right i yes. want to get her i want to get on june's train and i want to travel with june because june is my kind of girl like she just <laughs> takes me down alice in wonderland you know my kind of girl uh june i want to get into the pen goddess uh i found your website called pen goddess how'd you get that name well i'm an author i like to write and I haven't written something. You know, I'm still trying to get back to the sequel of one of my novels. Um, and I'm very much into the goddess religion. Being brought up in my religion, uh, Mary, Jesus's mother, was a huge part of it. And especially European. Uh, you know, I came from Scotland to the United States. And so I grew up in a very more Scottish household. And in, your, in Europe, uh, Mary, the Blessed Virgin, however you want to call her, the mother, uh, is, is, a, is an important part. And, and Therefore, I got later in life, as I became more aware of the goddess, the goddess religious, I decided that that worked better for me than the religion I had been brought up, baptized in, and went to all the parochial school I <laughs> went through. So, well, I, no, I went to the public high school because I want to be near the boys. And, yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of grow. I'm telling you. Uh -oh. <laughs> A little passion that exuberance is oh i won't be near the boys i had imagination girl <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it wasn't going down anymore with the nuns i was a, I was a bad girl I was a, I was a ruckus rebel teenager <laughs> you wanted some adventure <laughs> oh yes oh boy oh boy. no that's another whole show some other place another thing. so anyway um 
What are we talking about? <laughs> oh, we're talking about the goddess. <laughs> you had me in the room and I was like, oh, where are we going? <laughs> with respect to the, the muses, respect to the goddesses and the creativity, uh, very much became involved in the Wiccan, uh, pagan. I'm a witch, a practicing witch, uh, amongst other things. So I really respect the, you know, Father, son, the Sophia. The Sophia is the female uh, influence over the whole world. That's another whole study. <laughs> you know, I just keep studying. I mean, every day for me, I, I pick up a little something and study. And it all makes sense how this world really uh, is surrounded by the energy of the female principle that unfortunately mankind, because that's what they call it, mankind, has taken that and diminished it in this world. If you go to Europe, it has a stronger aspect than in America. Oh. America does not have a strong female aspect. Wow. And you and you mentioned something. I just re, it just hit me. You said you're from Scotland. Yes. So I was born in Scotland. Any... I came to this country when I was six. America. So do you have any history of ancestors that were mediums? Well, my <laughs> my mother didn't want to admit it because after all, she was a good religious woman, but she had dreams and her dreams were like prophecies. And when she had a certain dream, uh, it would happen. And she was really into a show called One Step Beyond. You wouldn't know it. You're too young, but it was on television forever. And it was in the late 50s. You can find it on YouTube. And they really explored the kinds of different experiences people like myself and other people had that socially were unacceptable, uh, you know, maybe by culture or whatever. And so she would talk about that. And she was very in it. She used to read our, she read tea leaves and she was really good at it. And her mother was kind of into it too, but it wasn't, or again, you could not come out of this part of the religion to really get into it. I'm going to tell you an interesting story about the first place we lived in San Francisco, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. So we lived on a street called Market Street. It's a very uh, thorough way in San Francisco. When we first came to America, we had a flat above a store. And later, not then, but later in life, I found out that it was a woman. By being on social media, I found this out. There was a woman and her daughter that lived up there. And she was a reader and a medium before we moved in. Now, downstairs to this store is called Crystal Way. It's a store that is a metaphysical store, sells crystals, does readings. And the building upstairs, our flat, is filled with healers and readers. They all have their own little room. So that building alone is really pretty cool. And I kind of write about some of that in my novel, The Sky in June. I kind of included some of that in there. Wow. Yeah, that, isn't that interesting? Yeah, that is. Like, I'm just... It's funny. Well, it's not funny. It, it it's it really is amazing how things come together. You know, the past, the history, the present, and and that's why I serve tea because it's the past, the present, and the future. You know, it's the time travel. It's understanding why we why we do the things we do, why we see the things we see, why we talk to the people we talk to. You know, why are we more distant with certain energies? And bodies and, and and that's why i really wanted to speak with you june is because there's so much of it that is unknown that we don't talk about and it's like you said we have these people that are going oh i see you know that, that's not how you see things that's not how you they can the spirits don't connect like that they don't try and make you turn into some weird well i mean it can dangling. but i love the where a if you watch dead files I love the way Amy handles it, the medium there. So that's how the pen goddess came, because I take up pen and I write and I am a devotee to the female entities, the female energy that surrounds this uh, planet. So do you find that you're connected more with the female energy than the male? Yes. The so creator, you know the imaginative, the yin, if you think of it that way, yin and yang. But I have, you have to balance, though. You know, uh, it's not only being connected to the yin, the female energy, it's how you're going to project it with the yang, with the fire energy, how you're going to walk, walk your talk. You can think it, but you got to walk your talk. 
I love it. So it has, it has to have both. And, and that's the same way uh, in uh, the intuitive mind. Are you a receiver? Are you a sender? And they have better to be balanced. You know, some people are very, like me, I'm a very strong receiver. That's how I get all the psychic information I got to be able to counsel people for years. But I'm also a sender. I'm not as strong as a sender, but I'm learning to be so I manifest in my life what I what I would like to have. And I and I have an ESP test. It's in two of my nonfiction books. And it, it helps you understand, are you a receiver? Which I think maybe, Miss Liz, that you are probably a strong receiver if you're having empathic um, reactions. Yeah. I, I get a lot of dreams, a lot of visions, and, and then it'll happen. And I'm like, oh, I've seen this somewhere. Where have I seen this before? And then for the longest time, I was scared of my dreams. And then I, I was like, they're, they're not here to hurt me. They're just here to give me messages. Like, you know. But I, I haven't opened that up, uh, you know, and I can see visions in rocks and crystals like I see people and animals and in the driftwood, I see animals all the time, you know, sending me a message and, you know, and I see eyes. I see eyes all the time. I'm not I, I you know, so uh, I think you're more the psychic mind, even more higher than the intuitive mind. You just yeah, that's what you're describing. Yeah. And I, I don't know why I'm, I'm for the longest time I was afraid of it. And now I'm just like, you know, it just needs to send me a message. It just wants me to look at it or pick it up, take it home, give it some love. You know, I, I collect a lot of driftwood. I have lots and lots of pieces and there's always eyes in there. There's always animals in there, uh, you know, and it depends on my mood too. I'll find like a dragon. I find a lot of pieces that look like dragons. I'm not sure why, but you know, maybe one day we can talk about that. That's um, your symbol. Well, that's a symbol then. St. George, you know, supposedly slow the dragon, but the dragon really represents uh, like a wisdom, an age-old wisdom. Yeah, that's what my grandma says. She says you're an old soul. She yeah, says well, there you go. You see, your grandma said it. I said it. Yeah. So, June, I want to get into these books. You talked about books. So how many books have you written? I have four books. Uh, I have a sequel to one. <laughs> I just have to get get it finished. Okay. Um, I have four books. I have two non-fictions and I have two fictional books. The first book I wrote in 1990 was a non-fiction book and it was how to go and get a reading, all the different kinds of readings, how you should approach it, what you should do with the information after. Too many people go to readings, they don't ask the right questions to get more and they don't use the information afterwards. I would say to clients, they'd come back to me and I'd say, well, this or that. No, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I listened to the recording, but I forgot. I said, well, what are you doing back here then? <laughs> Not a great Go way do to, your homework. <laughs> Not a great way to, to, to keep clients, right? <laughs> too, honest, too honest for my own good. Yeah. Um, so that book is telling you how to prepare for it, what to do. And at the end, there is an ESP test. I actually should send you the ESP test. I think you'd have fun with it. I'll just send it to you through email. And okay. um, then the next book really was started out as a screenplay in honor of my sisters. My sisters and nieces, we all belong to the same coven. And so I wanted to write, it was actually called Catholic Girls Make Good Witches. <laughs> so, they go to private school. <laughs> Well, we got the candles, the frankincenses, the flowers, the goddess. <laughs> we got it all, you know, very mysterious. And um, so then I, I did the screenplay and an author friend of mine says, you know, June, a screenplay would sell better if you made it into a novel, if it was a novel. I said, oh, my God, how long is that going to take? I already done three years of this thing. <laughs> so I wrote the novel, The Sky in June. It was It's about a little girl that has uh, unusual powers in, in a religious family. And they're immigrants. They come from Scotland. They come to the United States, live in San Francisco. It's not my family. There were eight of us kids. There's only four of these girls. <laughs> so that's a really popular book, which I'm very happy. It's very close to my heart, this book. My next book, when I would, went down to uh, L.A., it's actually in Hollywood, and did a stage presentation with actors for The Sky in June, um, I, I met an, a Scottish actress. She's actually uh, a voiceover, and she's very popular now. And she asked me to write one for her, a screenplay for her. So I wrote it, but my sister died while I was writing it, my closest oh. person in the 
world to me at that time of my life. And I just couldn't write anymore. By the time I got back to it and back to her, she had moved on. <laughs> That's Hollywood. She had moved on. And so um, I just made it a novel. I wrote the screenplay again. I made it a novel, and it, it's pretty cool. It's about the summer of love in San Francisco, and it's uh, the dark underbelly of it, murder, sex, rock and roll, you know. And then my last book is... Uh, about spirits, how to talk with spirits. I did not want to write another book like that. I don't, there's so many books out there, you know, yeah. on that. I had a friend who had a dream who said his angel visited him and I needed to write this book. We went back and forth about several times. And I kept saying, I'm not going to write this book. And he said, no, no, you have to write this book. My angel, my guides came. And, no, no, no. I said, okay, I'll write a little book so it will stop having you PM me, okay? And so I started writing it. And one of my questions was, if you don't mind me taking up more time, uh, nope. was, was no, um, go ahead. I knew what I want to teach. I have a wealth, I have like 50 years of information, but what do you want to know is how I looked at it. So I sent out an email and put it on my social media and sent out an email saying to people, what do you want to know? Let me answer your questions because I, I have a whole lot of information. I had so many emails come in with people asking questions that I made that the second chapter of my book. You know how you always say, well, your questions should be at the end. Yeah. I actually had a woman give me a bad review and said, this author doesn't, she doesn't know how to write a book because she put the questions in the front. You did I different. I like different. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> hey. I'd rather answer your questions than me write a book about stuff that you don't even care about. You know, right? like all chit I'm going to get to do the homework first. <laughs> exactly. So I answer questions and then I go into um, how to, if you go to a seance, how, what did you expect? If you go to a medium uh, or if you just go on ghost hunts. So then I write other chapters too. And that's also a very popular book. That's the book that the producer the screenwriter producer found my, one of my murder cases and is working on a, uh, uh, bringing it to the screen. That's, you know, that's yeah. the book with that. I don't so love that you do different because I do different too. Like everybody, I just wrote three books and, and everybody's like, oh, that's so different. Uh, yeah, that's what Miss Liz does. I don't do, I don't yeah. follow the Why? Team. Right. We can't get I got exuberant. a different train to ride. <laughs> when, you, when you're authentic, you, you have to have exuberance so that you can say, this is what I want to show the world. I right? want to teach the world or show the word or share. Exactly. So I want to talk about, we're almost at the hour here. Like we're just flying right by. Our train is just a moving today. Oh, we're having fun. <laughs> we're having just too much fun. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk about the Haunted Bay. Tell us a little bit about that. So uh, Ying, who is the producer, Ying Lu, she had come to me a few years before for a reading. I was still doing readings then. And her mother had just passed and she was you know grieving very heavily so we had we had a reading it was really interesting <laughs> in the reading because she recorded it and she actually put it on something on youtube later like at how right on that i was even i'm always surprised to tell you the truth when i find out how good i was i'm like whoa i'm good huh <laughs> <laughs> look at rego <laughs> whoa whoa <laughs> I'm always surprised as everybody, the person coming to the reading, I'm probably more surprised. Uh, anyway, she called me and she said, well, I'm working in a state college and, and um, last year I'm working on a film and I hooked up with this Alameda Paranormal. They go in with all the uh, equipment to get the sounds and, and such like that. She said, would you like to come as a medium and go down? She named um, the Zodiac Circle. And I said, absolutely not. I would never do that to the living relatives. Go in and do that. I said, I, I don't recommend that you should do that because some of the relatives are still living. That, that's painful. So then she said, okay, I have another place. <laughs> it's the Condor Club down, uh, you know, on, on uh, Broadway. Broadway. It's a strip joint. It's San Francisco famous strip joint. Well, adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I always wanted to go there, but you know, ladies didn't go there. Yeah. Right, young, young ladies didn't go to something like that. So you know, Carol Dota, she's the first one that went uh, topless. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'd love to go there. So that's how I got involved. I went there and then we did another uh, investigation. She said, well, how about if you come to this place? It's supposed to be, you know, full of activity. And I always say, don't tell me anything. Just give me an address and let me show up. 
you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to have my psychic mind colored by what you want to tell me or is on social media or uh, can be found historically. I, like that. I, I don't work the, uh, that way. I can't work that way. Yeah. Don't even tell me. Don't even talk to me. I do that with clients. Don't tell me anything. <laughs> so uh, that's how I got into it. And, oh, man, what a trip it's been. I've been in so many places. And, and uh, that's so that little high that little college, uh, Sweat State, uh, in San Francisco, that project turned into this TV show. And I always say, don't watch the first two ones. Oh. If you're going to go on YouTube, Amazon Prime, don't watch the first two. Oh, go skip to the it. Third one. <laughs> <laughs> skip one and two, go to three. <laughs> She's mutable. <laughs> Is there a lot of reason why we don't want to watch one and two? <laughs> so what's that? Is there a reason why one and two shouldn't be watched? Let's move on to another subject. Well, because because they did that before they really refined themselves. Okay. Before they really refined what they were doing. And uh, people had commented that it was, the, they just didn't care for it. So it wasn't, it's not really as refined as it moves on. Uh, we all became more refined. Or the filming people, the editing people, everybody became more refined in how they did it. And sometimes that's you just the best skip way. Yeah, so that's, that's why I say that. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just got to skip it, right? You just skip the first two steps. Yeah, and jump yeah, the yeah. You know, you can also go on YouTube. The, she still has some on YouTube that you can watch, uh, our paranormal investigations, The Haunted Bay. Yeah, if you want to watch me, you know, because they don't, there's others besides me. Uh, well, there's one or two. But <laughs> <laughs> so just put The Haunted Bay with June Ahern if you want to, you know. So June, I want to get into the last question. We're running up to almost to the end here. Okay. Your favorite color is yellow. Why? Well, since I'm so mutable, it is now. <laughs> it could change. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so alive, right? It's exuberant. It's just a lot. When you look at it, there's a cheeriness of it. My bedroom's yellow. Ooh. I love it. You know, I used to love the blue. I used to have a blue bedroom. Then I had a kind of a fuchsia pink bedroom. But then it was just like yellow. I want to wake up in the morning and just feel, ah, you know, not that I do every day. I'm just like everybody else. I have really down times, you know. But just that yellow alone. Yellow is such a positive energy. It's uh, seen in the third chakra, you know, like the sun. It's the sun coming up. That's why I like yellow. It's just so beautiful. And uh, has a childlike energy with it. Oh, I like that childlike. You know, you're, you're childlike. You play in a lot. Your imagination, it just it just ex explains who June is. So June, what message would you have for everyone who's tuning in today? What I'd like them to do is not be afraid of their intuition. If you have something you don't understand or it frightens you, you stop and think, why am I experiencing that kind of reaction to what my intuition is telling me? Is it warning me? Or is it trying to get out of my own self-belief that something's wrong with me or something's wrong with the world? Oh, oh that's another topic. And, uh, you know, so trust your intuition, but by educating yourself. You have to educate yourself to be able to trust it. And it's not going to lead you astray. It might not lead you exactly where you want to go right away, but it's not going to lead you astray. It's going to help you live a authentically and don't be a follower of the influencers unless that is your belief that's what the intuition does it gives you a strong self-identity well i want to thank you so much june for sitting and having tea with me you know this is how we roll we have some fun we have some giggles we get some seriousness you know and we bring the imagination back out into all of you yes. out there listening so again if you'd like to share this tea time get it out there share it with a friend you know if you want some entertainment ch check out miss liz's tea times there's a lot of tea times check out the youtube channel give it a good subscribe Ring that bell and you'll be notified whenever there's a tea time. And I will be back tonight for the final show of the first day of June. We're already half a year with uh, Dr. Jonathan Hayes, who is a gospel recording artist. So we're going to do some gospel. We're going to 
soften it up this evening. We started this morning with miscarriage and child loss, and then we jumped into paranormal activity and investigator, and then we're going to soften it up with some gospel music and some and find out what took Jonathan on his path. So I'll see everybody at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check it out. Check out the YouTube channel. Give it a ring, and you'll no be notified when we're live. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, June.